morning grace mercy and peace be all yours from god our father lord our savior jesus christ amen, amen. please be seated greetings to you on this uh, good shepherd sunday i just wanted to give a little uh, backdrop of what it means every year on the fourth sunday of easter the church at large celebrates Good Shepherd Sunday. So this reading, what you heard today, it is come ar- it comes around the same theme every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter. As we celebrate that today, it really helps us to understand why we say or when why Jesus says, "I am the Good Shepherd." To really unpack it, I just wanted to give a brief three-point introduction about I am the Good Shepherd. When Jesus says that, he, he declares that I am the Good Shepherds, Good Shepherd. He also describes that I am the Good Shepherd. And Jesus also gives an explain, explanation of why he is set apart, dedicated, sent by Father God to be the Good Shepherd. It, is not, it did not happen overnight that the Father God was in a good mood and sending his son Jesus, hey, you go. It's not like that. It is the story of a lot of Old Testament stories connecting here about why Jesus is called the Good Shepherd. In the coming days also, you will hear about more, more, more from this particular I am. You will hear more about that. Jesus said seven different I am's. He said, even in the same passage earlier, he said, I am the door. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and life. And so on and so forth. He said, I am the living water. So he said seven I am's. And here he says again, I am the good shepherd. Why? He says that because this I am is very, very important. If you know the story of Moses in the burning bush, where God meets Moses, preparing Moses to lead the people of Israel from the bondage to freedom. So Moses meets God besides around in the presence of a burning bush. There Moses is asking this question, who are you? And God says, I am that I am. That word is called Yahweh. It's a tetragrammaton we call Y-H-W-H. Which we, in, the, in, the, in the Jewish tradition, they do not use the word the vowels in Yahweh so that it is so people are afraid to speak God's name so that they will think, oh, if I say God's name, it's going to come and hurt me. So they do not use the vowel because the vowel is the one who gives life to the word. So Yahweh. So like that, like if I put this way, this is called y Sorry, Y-H-W-H. That was not my plan to write it on, but I do write it. That, uh, that A and E, you don't, you don't see that there. Because, uh, uh, and here, in the Greek translation, in the later part of that, when Jesus said, I am, when God said, I am that I am, Jesus is using the same word, I am, the good shepherd. So that's the reason he was keep on telling that. He's making the connection that, Father God and I are one and we are in the business together in saving lives, saving you and me. That is the reason it's called that I am. That's what he said. I am the good shepherd. Very boldly he says, because there he is representing his father God when he, Jesus said that. When he saves you, when he rescues you, he represents that as well. Okay, I just want to make it. So that's where I said it is a declaration. I am the good shepherd. Why? Because after the, the, in, in the journey of people of Israel, 
they they went through the wilderness and they came across lot of priests so jesus we call jesus in so many names right we call him as king of kings lord of lords we call him the chief priest in hebrew book of hebrews we talk about his name he is the chief priest in first peter we read about jesus as the chief of shepherd so he is the chief of shepherd so in so many ways here jesus is explaining the reason for the explanation is you need to know what is the pretext of this passage in john 9 john 9th chapter is where jesus is healing a person who was born visually impaired he heals him and jesus heals him on the day of sabbath and the leaders of the the, the, the religious leaders the quote and quote priests the quote and quote shepherd of that the group they were all critiquing jesus how come you do that on the sabbath day so here jesus is telling why he see why he is doing that because he cares for his fold he says i care so i am the good shepherd so he gives this parable to his naysayers that i am the good shepherd connecting himself to yahweh god so you do not need to be afraid about god you do not need to say the na- name of jesus anymore because i am the good shepherd so that's what he is telling this passage this parable about how he takes care of it even in matthew gospel we read about jesus and the 99 sheep and the one was missing i'll come for the later so this is the whole idea about these three three points now we go for the second one so what what the declaration is all about in chapter 10 sorry in uh, in 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 chapter 10 verse 14 he says i know my sheep let me see let me pu- let me pull that word back for you so that you can get the idea of it 11 it says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep and so and and in verse and uh, in, in verse 14 he repeats it again i am the good shepherd as well okay so that's what the reason i'm sorry sorry okay <laughs> what do i do here i wish okay sorry so i also want to tell you this one today also we call it as psalm 23 sunday i'm sure most of you who are tuning in who are here you all familiarized or you know by heart a psalm 23 if you are not yet i would encourage you it's not too late and if you are children you encourage them they it may be it may be really distasteful for them to memorize things but if you really help them to memorize now it is going to be helpful we have lost that idea of memorizing we are we are so lazy and uh, we 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 are, we are making everything is uh, in in our, in our hands and handheld devices but i would encourage you this words can help you i'm sorry it's very small because i put it small not in not intentionally but also will help you what is all about the lord is my shepherd this psalm 23 you can hear that psalm when you have a birthday you can hear that psalm when you have a celebration of your life you can read that psalm when we are saying goodbye for someone from this part of the world this psalm connects to all context of your life so the lord is my shepherd i shall not want the whole ch- chapter 23 is summed up in one verse because david speaks about lord is my shepherd in a different time and era even before way before when jesus was incarnated in a human form god he was telling the lord is my shepherd after so many years jesus says i am the good shepherd the one word i am the good shepherd is summed up 
the qualities of good shepherd what a lord how how who is the lord uh, the, the lord is my shepherd and the quality of the lord is mentioned in psalm 23 my the the the, the, the good shepherd provides the good shepherd comforts the good shepherd honors good shepherd never fails the central theme of psalm 23 where it says verse where, where four where, verse four says even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil and you are with me so when god says i am the good shepherd he is with you now and with you forever and ever and ever that is what it is all about and also the psalm 23 reminds about seven acts of god he makes us he leads us he is with us he prepares a table for us he anoints our head with oil and he dwells with us all the days of our life that is summed up in i am the good shepherd and jesus says that i just want to give that connection to you so that is a declaration made who is the lord who, uh, lord shepherd who is, lord is my shepherd who is that jesus says i am the good shepherd what a privilege for the new testament christian like you and me we know the name we have the name of course in david's time they we do know that god is going to send his son jesus because that is all god's plan but for us that's what when thomas and jesus were meeting jesus telling thomas hey thomas because you are believing because you are seeing but the people who are believing without seeing me they are blessed so what a privilege you and i have when jesus says i am the good shepherd So that is a that is a that is a website called Roadside America there is a lot of story this is a picture is a sculpture made of you know the famous poem you you may you may know the poem footprints in the sand poem footprints in the sand so i read the last four words of that when you saw only one set of footprints in the sand that is when i carried you so i am the good shepherd is a great example of god carrying you okay second point i am the good shepherd the description god describes who he is i just to i I'm, i'm not going to explain that how he describes but i'm going to explain to you through a video clip here So you and I are the people going and getting trapped into what we are not supposed to be. And God constantly rescuing us. Constantly rescuing us. That is what God describe of himself. Patient and limited. and exactly this 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 is this going viral in the facebook and i i came across there are millions of comments of it this this one comment i did not read all the million comments when i say million it's not million i'm just telling it but the comment really draw my attention when jesus left the 99 to rescue the one and the one was me somebody commented on that i just want to bring it to you you can put it to yourself and myself that the little 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 sheep the little boy was trying to pull it out he left the rest of them and come to rescue that's one was you when jesus said i am the good shepherd that good shepherd comes for you and he lay down his life for you that is the description of god what a what a great privilege we have my friends and third point i am the good shepherd the dedication the dedication of jesus christ our lord the good shepherd par excellent the the chief shepherd among us is what it is i'm going to show you this picture here let me see 
God says, when say, I am the good shepherd, he tells you, like Pastor Sean started the sermon today, the church service today, calling you, you are mine. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Jesus owns you. Jesus owns you. This picture is so close that I thank you, for Pastor Sean, for zooming that for me. This is a great artwork. The hand is it resembles of the resurrected Lord, resurrected Lord. And the person behind, the way God is carrying. Just picture yourself or my myself. And there is a little light at the center and it looks like a little snake or something like that. And Jesus was, he, he, he's making a victory over it. Victory over evil in rescuing the sin ridden, the broken, the lonely, the challenged, the person with heavy burden, person who cannot carry herself or himself. Jesus is there. I am the good shepherd. I will lay down my life. So the, 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 the symbol here reminds us, he lay down his life so that you have life. So that the definition of death has changed. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And he said, you are mine. Whenever I come across that word, you are mine, this story comes to me. I was, I think I was seven years old. I may, I, I may be wrong, six or seven years old. Many of you know, I have a sister. Yeah, she's five years older to me. And one day when we are playing, you know, in those days we play outside, you know. Uh, and uh, we are playing, of course, on, on, on the streets and uh, up from our house. So a guy who was coming in a bicycle, he hit my sister. Not, not the, he, the bicycle hit my sister and my sister fell down and had scratches. And he sped away. But we know that he's a, he's a familiar face. He come to the same route every day, the same time. So very next day, I was waiting for the same time and the guy comes. I was running and rushing and I'm standing in front of his bike and I'm, I started to hit him. I still remember that. I was so tiny. This is a, this is a big man. And I said, you hit my sister yesterday and ran away. By the time, because I was crying and all, my father come and everything, I started to hit him. I still, when I was remembering that, if I'm a human being, just really, I, I was so young than my sister, right? I told, I, I told, she's my sister. I remember that. God, God is doing the same thing. Whenever you are hurt, whether it is in mind, body, or soul, whenever an unanswered thing. Sometimes you may not explain things to anybody. Your own siblings may not understand you. Your own community may not understand you. Your own spouses may not understand you. Your own children may not understand your struggle. Your own workplace may not understand you. God says, you are mine. You are mine. That's what God says when I said, I am the good shepherd. He means it. It's not like lip service. He lives it. He says, I lay down my life for my sheep. He says that. That is dedication. Because that is what God, that, that Jesus alone can do it. So that's the reason we as the shepherds of this world, where God has called pastors, leaders, elders, teachers, prophets, the fivefold ministry of the church, we lead people to the chief of the shepherd.
because he is the main shepherd. The worldly shepherds may fail. But at the same time, it is a great responsibility for worldly shepherds to be walking the ground. That's the reason scripture says, if you, unless you are not called, don't become pastors. The Bible says that. It's very hard. When I call your mind, think about, think about it. Sometimes some, pe pe people can say, every time they say, hey, hey, uh, being a pastor is easy. Only Sunday they preach and all these things. But if, if you hear that say, you have to live our life. The same way in your own professions. I cannot live your profession. It's very hard for one, unless we are trained to do that, right? Or called to do that. So when, when, when a pastor calls a mid, mid, midnight call of somebody in a desperation or somebody want to cry and call or something, there are unique pastoral experiences, particularly during these COVID times. Our pastoral care crisis has soared. Not only again, this is another thing Jesus is trying to tell. So previously, the church used to be so limited within the within the um, square uh, mile of a, a community. Now, the church has expanded its, uh, expanded its horizon. So we have, unless God brings people to us, we do not know. So we have, in our church, we have parishioners, we see you in person, we see you online, we've never seen you or met you, but you know us, and sometimes you have to introduce to ourselves, we know by your name, but that is a new way of pastoral ministry in the time of crisis in leading people to the good shepherd. I'm telling you, you are mine too. So whoever you are tuning in virtually week after week, we know you and God knows you. Thank you for being a part of that, giving us, and God was the one connecting us. So we are really praying how we can minister in a larger context. We have been praying and asking God to help us with that. Why I'm saying all these things is that this is what people are looking to be connected to. I'm sorry. Finally, the, de the, the, the dedication of the good shepherd. And he says, my sheep knows me. I know them. So in the ministry, also in the worldly ministry, it is very, as, as human beings, it is very hard to know, but we try. We try to know by your name. Most of us, we connect, we try to keep, I, in, in our pastoral ministry, we try to remember most of your names and calling you. That is one of the very key things in ministry as well. And Jesus, why we do that? We cannot be Jesus, but the Jesus, that's the reason when we pray, we pray, if somebody asks, Pastor, you pray, I, then I ask, what is the name of the person? Why we do that? Because we, we, we seriously pray. We just don't say, hey, just tell the name. We just, we don't do that. If we do that from the human perspective, think about God. Think about God's diary. The whole world is crying out to him. Particularly the people in India and Brazil. The world's two COVID epicenter now going on. My, my Facebook page, when I, I, I'm afraid to open my Facebook page because every day, only yesterday I came across around 12 pastors in India die because some of them I know who went to school with me and things like that. The world is in such a chaos, crisis. That is where we need to help people to come around and pray. Ask God to pray for one another. We support, we have a long list of prayer around 9 o'clock prayer every day. We pray. When we ring the bell, we pray for people. When they ask us, we call us, we send them sometime little clips of some video clips to pray for them. Because what it says, I am the good shepherd. We try to do that, a simple a glimpse of it, but we are not the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. We're trying to do. Finally, I want to show this picture and move on. This is a video. It happened last week. Again, I will explain to you after you watch this movie, uh, video. It really happened I let you do it. Very powerful forms. The child suddenly spits on the ground, even as a speeding train hurdles two words. Then out of nowhere, a hero cast is emerging as a super saint. The man is seen sprinting towards the kid, who lands the track, awaiting a certain day. And 
I don't know how many of you saw that, that went viral last week. Think about it. The mother is visually impaired and the little boy fell through the crack, fell through the platform. Happened in one of the busiest train, train routes in India. Major fast train comes to that route. So the boy fell. This young man who is working for the railways running to save the child. Just picture the person who is falling every day out of our own sin, of our own limitation, our own hypocrisy. We fall through the cracks every day. Jesus is constantly running, running, running to save you. The world, the world pressure, Satan, evil, temptation to give up things, to really be why, why this should be kind of thing. Is on us every day, constantly overwhelming us. Every day. And Jesus is running and saving you, saving you, saving you. One at a time, every day, all day. It's you and me. I am a good shepherd. I know my own and my sheep knows me. And he says, my father, my father, I'll just finish this up with that. Those are, it, can, it, can, it can help you. I lay down, for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. So Jesus only can lay down his life and bring his life back again because he is Jesus. That is the reason we believe when we die, we will raise again because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am that I am. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. So he is with us. Psalm 23. When we, when we are alive, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. When we die, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I will walk you through the darkest valley with the peace of God. Pass us all human understanding. Fill your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have any comments,